Hello everyone, this is Alex. On the request of a viewer, I have decided to start using my voice in actual videos from now on. So, in this video we're going to talk about the best primate, objectively speaking, the Sumatran orangutan. Orangutans in general have three major musculoskeletal adaptations that distinguish them from the other great apes. The first is in their arms and hands. While African apes have legs that are more muscular than their arms, orangutans have arms more muscular than their legs. Their arms are also the longest among the great apes, being twice as long as their torsos. Furthermore, they have made a huge evolutionary breakthrough in the anatomy of their hands. While most primates have a single optimal si branch size to hold, an orangutan's fingers are so strongly curved that it has two separate favored sizes, one for the entire hand and one for what is called their double locked grip. Their thumbs are short and located low on the palm, but are just as strong as in primates with longer thumbs. The second adaptation is in their hips. Orangutans have large hip rotator muscles, small hip extensor and flexor muscles, and are missing one of the ligaments that attaches to the femur. This allows even the stiffest orangutan to flex its hip at really weird angles that only the most flexible of other apes can reproduce. Again, this is very important for their arboreal lifestyle. The third is in their skull. Orangutans lack the frontal sinus of the other great apes, meaning they are less prone to nasal infections, though they can still get what is called air sacculitis, which is the orangutan equivalent of strep throat. They also lack a muscle called the digastricus anterior that opens the mouth. Rather than opening their mouth like we do with the digastricus, they pry it open using their tongue. Researchers don't know exactly why this is the case, though I personally suspect it may have something to do with the enormous air sac that male orangutans have. Compared to the Bornean orangutan, the Sumatran orangutan is leaner except for its skull. Sumatran orangutans are more efficient at digesting glucose than their Bornean relatives, meaning they store less energy but man can maintain higher activity levels at a very similar metabolic rate. They also have slightly different cardiovascular genes, though their effect is not fully known at this time. Primates all exhibit very complex behavior, and the Sumatran orangutan exhibits some of the most complicated behavior among primates. Like all orangutans, they are mainly solitary. Females will tolerate each other and even interact with like human friends if they are familiar with one another. This is especially the case in the loser ecosystem, which has the densest population of orangutans in the world. Males, on the other hand, will fight whenever they meet each other. This, as, as such, older males are often very scarred. Male orangutans go through a sudden character shift after puberty. As juveniles, they are sexually aggressive and unpleasant, causing females to seek more mature males. However, once the male is old enough, and certain other criteria are met, such as the lack of another dominant male, they undergo a sudden change in character. It is not exactly known why this is the case. I suspect it may have something to do with a drop in neurohormones associated with fear. Once this is done, they become sexually patient and will call out to females instead of hunting them down. This, at once they meet, reach this stage, they will grow a pair of massive cheek flanges. Females recognize these flanges as signs of maturity and will seek out such males to protect them from these sexually aggressive, small, juvenile males. Orangutan brains are rounder and thicker than in chimpanzees or gorillas. They have a smaller orbital frontal cortex, the part associated with sociality, a smaller and denser frontal pole, and larger dorsolateral frontal cortices. I could not find any information about the lobes aside from the frontal. The cerebrum of an orangutan has more neurons relative to its cerebellum than in humans. In other words, of their total brain power and neuron counts, orangutans devote more of it to the part that thinks compared to humans. Compared to the Bornean orangutan, the Sumatran species has a brain about 10% larger relative to body size. While exactly which parts were larger were not specified in my sources, this change evidently matters quite a bit, as studies found Sumatran orangutans outperformed the Bornean specimens and often even chimpanzees in every cognitive area, especially if you narrowed the contestants down to only the females. They proved more curious but also more cautious and spent much more time examining unfamiliar objects. The examination time increased the weirder the researchers deemed the object was, while the Bornean orangutans consistently grew bored rather quickly. In the modern day, as their rainforest habitat is split by farms and roads, flanged adult male orangutans of any species will escort females across the roads or farms and protect them in a behavior called a consortship. 
Compare that to male gorillas, which promptly attempt to kill their mate's current offspring after taking over a harem. Shout out to any human children who underwent that as well. Speaking of rainforest habitat, You may have heard about the palm oil crisis. It's been the subject of many forms of media, including a short fiction novel that I wrote, called The Durian Man, if you want to check it out. Unfortunately, most humans hate ebooks, and for good reason, which is why I'm discussing it here as well. The Sumatran orangutan's habitat is rapidly shrinking due to unsustainable palm oil usage. Most other Indonesian and Malaysian species face this problem as well, which is sad. Unfortunately, palm oil is the best vegetable oil that we have access to, so boycotting it altogether won't change anything. Instead, find corporations that use unsustainable versions, such as Wendy's or Denali ingredients, and join the movements to force them to use sustainable palm oil. This sounds like it won't do much, with corporate power and all, but it has already convinced several companies like Yum Ingredients, which runs many familiar sub-brands like KFC, and Nabisco, the cookie company that sells Oreos, to switch to sustainable farming. If you want to take it a step further, donate to charities such as the Rainforest Action Network, which supports rainforests around the world, or support the ecotourism business in Indonesia by going to meet some Sumatran orangutans in person, once this whole COVID thing is over, that is. Let me know what you thought of the voice. I think my accent is terrible, but it might still be preferable to the text option. Please let me know in the comments. Thank you.